Hey everybody, what's up? It's Chase. Welcome to another episode of the show. Very excited about today's guest. If you have been following me for n number of years, then you will not have forgotten uh, an episode where I was given a Lego camera and forced to make amazing pictures around the city of Hong Kong. That invitation came from Kai Man Wong, a legendary YouTuber, dear, dear friend who has a bunch of new announcements. He's sharing a first time here with us on the show. I cannot wait for you to see this episode. Kai is hilarious, humble. Uh, he's got a new book, a new YouTube channel. We've got so much stuff cooking. Uh, and we also get to take a, a walk down memory lane uh, memory lane, uh, with respect to favorite cameras, favorite lenses. So if you're a, a camera nerd, this episode is going to be for you. Kai Wong is back in the house, man. Thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. Welcome back. I don't know if I can say welcome back because you haven't been on the show before, but we've done a lot of stuff together, so it's good to be in your presence, my good oh, man. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm honored to be on your, your show. Come on. This has been a reunion long in the making, and hopefully right now we've got a. I I mean, every time the word Kai is in my feed or there's something <laughs> about an old camera or if I take a picture if there is a picture in any social feed with me holding a camera and it's not that little Lego camera <laughs> that you gave me in Hong Kong, you know, whatever, 10 years ago, I get a rash of shit for it and about 200 questions in the comments. Where's Kai? And how about that Lego camera? LOL or whatever. Um, you still get stopped on the street that, and uh, uh, the people still say, oh, yeah, I saw your digital rev. All the time. And you, you probably are jesting now, but, you know, I, I would say. Within the last week, I was stopped and asked about uh, photography in general, and then they said that they first saw me on Digital Rev, <laughs> and that was like literally a decade ago. So, again, your your question may be facetious, but uh, I'm, you know, that's a a weekly occurrence for me. That's how that's how uh, impactful that show that you made was, and it was. I had a blast. I'll never forget it, man. I know that was uh, that was a fantastic uh, episode, wasn't it? Where we what. what Got you to do some really silly things in Hong Kong. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. And for those who don't know what uh, we're talking about here, um, you know, Kai is a legendary YouTuber. Started the the Digital Rev Universe, which is a, a shop in Hong Kong. Started making amazing videos, and we, uh, I was the, the his guest on his show. Um, where in fact, as he just mentioned, we got to do all this stuff. And if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the uh, folks who are listening to the show and haven't, I would just suggest Google my name or Kai's name and Lego camera, and you will be entertained. It's nine minutes of, of entertainment. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'd like to go back a little bit for the folks who are new to your world. Um, in case people have been living under a rock because you've been making am amazing videos, you know, roughly a million subs on YouTube. Uh, you got a new book coming out that I want to talk about, but just to orient, uh, folks who may be new to your work, take us back to the way back and, um, what got you interested in photography and on YouTube and, uh, and then where you are now, what you're doing, give us a little orientation. Yeah. I mean, I started learning photography in university, uh, studied film and media and then, uh, started learning, uh, you know, I, okay. I, I originally started learning photography because it was the easiest module in, in, in as part of my course. <laughs> it, it meant that I could uh, have Thursdays as a, as a kind of lion. I could, I, could, I could sleep in because the teacher never actually ran any lessons. He just said, hey, hey, do a project and go away. I don't want to see your face for the rest of the term. And that was it. That was, that was my, my photography lessons. Um, and it's, uh, it, it scarred me. No. Um, yeah. I mean, that was, that was when I started uh, getting really interested in photography. And then um, I was very lucky to do digital work because I started doing marketing. And then I started uh, experimenting YouTube videos for marketing. And then I changed to digital work because I was interested in photography. And I wanted to combine YouTube and photography, and you know there wasn't many people doing it at the time, so it was quite a yeah. 
Well, yeah, and go go one level deeper for people who don't know what digital rev is and don't know. You guys used to make a video, what, like three a week or something like that. And again, this is early on when people weren't doing that and you built the channel up and give us a little more color there and and then transition us from you departing that channel because it wasn't something that you owned. It was an audience that you were cultivating on behalf of somebody else and, and moved over to your own world so chronicle a little bit more history there go one layer deeper and then what you're doing today yeah and when i started at digital rev there was no preston really there's no no there's no other channels to, to just just copy i mean of course there are things that we like watching on tv and that was probably the the easiest way to think about wh where do we want to take the channel so uh, was that like top top, top gear in yeah France, top right? gear for sure um because there were some photography channels at that time there were unboxing and it's, it's very straightforward and I think photography was quite and it still is a bit a bit geeky and we wanted it to be an entertaining channel about photography so it's entertainment with a bit of photography thrown in and then yeah did a few years of that and I decided you know what I want to be creative oh the best way to be creative is to go solo I thought and, I, and that's that's why I went solo did my own thing didn't have to uh, answer to a boss or make a certain number of videos on a certain day. Is that what you mean by, you know, by creative yeah. or is it more about freedom? I mean, when we first started Digital Rev TV, of, of course, we were kind of given free reign of, of everything. We could we could do almost anything we wanted. But as, as time went on, we you kind of obviously have to please your boss. So it started, you start having slight creative differences and, I have ideas that I want to do and, and things that I want to experiment with. So that, that the only way really is to, to just leave the kind of um, corporate environment. So now that was, that was all Hong Kong based. Now you're in the UK. Um, and for the folks who, uh, again, who haven't been following your every move, you now have kids, you have a new house, You've got a new vision for your uh, footprint on YouTube. I'll just call it the internet. Give me, give me, give me some more here. You're making me uh, dig for this. I want you to tell me a story about your your current status because you're in the UK and have been for a few years, which is obviously different than Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And uh, you became a family man. You know, like you've taken a little time away, and now you're back. And bigger than ever with a new channel and new uh, new book and whatnot. So what what gives, man? How'd you? What, that's a major shift in basically every area of life. Yeah, I mean, when when I went solo, that was just immediately after having my first kid, and you know that changes things. That that puts everything in perspective, and everything ends up being um, for them. And you you want to do things. You want to you want to challenge yourself, and um, you know I start. Uh, doing work with. so I, I did a collaboration with Nat Geo that was great and traveling and I would uh, we, we'd take we'd take him we'd take him on the road and we, we'd uh, uh, explore places together and they, it was great uh, for him to see all these different countries and um, now it's a little bit different with two it's a bit, a bit more difficult and especially as the oldest is now in school but of course uh, I want to do as much as I can while um, this this, this boy is still a bit of a spring chicken, you know, still a bit of life left in me. So I might as well spend all that energy doing some stuff. So yeah, yeah I've been doing the book. This is, uh, this is a new direction. Um, and as I said, a new direction. Um, okay, it's a vague plan. The lock's here. We want to make, make new videos with the old dynamic duo of me and Lock. It just is. Yeah, and he's naming his uh, was essentially his co-host, but ostensibly the the uh, filmer. As if you were the host of D Digital Rev, I mean, obviously Locke had a, a appearance in lots of them. But uh, so he's moving back to the UK and you're getting the band back together. Can you promise us anything? Because again, fans are hanging on your every word right now, and I'm sure this episode's going to be very popular, especially amongst the camera photo universe that uh we've both you know had a foot in for a you know decade or two so it you know nothing else you can't you, you can't tease it you can't give us more come on i mean let's just what are you doing what's the what's the you get the, the band back together is one thing but tell us more 
Yeah, I mean, let's let's just say we're going to be doing similar. Well, we're going to take the old formula and work on that because and there's when I'm when I'm shooting by myself, when I'm vlogging, it worked. There's so many things that you can't do. I mean, I've I've, I've got a whole load of ideas uh, that I've been keeping in the ideas bank, and uh, it's kind of i uh, difficult to do, or it's a bit silly to do by yourself when you sh- when you're filming yourself in a field. It, it doesn't make sense to feel, <laughs> film that. Um, so yeah, I mean th- that's what Locke is here for. He's here to film that for me, and w- you know we'll have that uh, comic uh, interaction between us again. Um, so yeah, I think there's certain things that we might not be able to touch on because obviously we did that for Digital Rev, and you know that's uh, either we don't want to touch yeah. on that because that's that's old news. Uh, that'll be it would be boring to just tread on the same ground. Or it would be, I don't know, a court case. No. Um, but, yeah, we, we want to <laughs> – bigger ideas, big ideas. Um, we're going to start off – And is that going to be on your channel for the YouTubers out there? That's just that – Yeah. That's just YouTube slash Kai Man Wong, right? I mean, it's not going to be right? straight away, straight in the deep end. Um, we, we're going to start slowly. I mean, Locke is, Locke is busy in a minute figuring out where to live uh, so i can't have him full-time working on this right now so I'm, I'm just figuring out we're just figuring out um you know where to get the time and um how to fund it as well <laughs> that's you know minor issues yeah. minor issues the, the main thing is that we've got the ideas and uh you know, when, when when you work with somebody for so long and you kind of just it doesn't take long to explain an idea you just you can you can just talk about it and it just it just clicks and, and that's the great thing about having lock uh, here making videos together with me again well i'm excited to see what you guys can create and again the world is it all is it going to be at your channel at kaiman wong on youtube yes it's going to be on my channel uh, we we did have another so no- a separate channel but we're going to use that for a uh, second additional channel for tracking stuff, which is uh, less interesting. On got it. All right, then we're going to move to the book because uh, I don't think of you much as a writer, but I do think of you as a, an absolute wiz- wi- wizard with a, a camera. And um, and the book is about film photography, which I thought was awesome. Uh, for and again, one of the things that I would encourage this audience to do, those who are listening and watching right now, um, the best thing that we can do to support the people on the show is to buy their book, especially between now announcing it, where you can go and it's actually on the internet, and before that first week when it goes on sale. And so let's do Kai a solid here and go pick up his book. It's an incredible book. I want to say congratulations. Uh, Old School Photography, 100 Things You Must Know to Take Fantastic Film Photos. And let's just say you're not even into film photos. There are so many hilarious anecdotes that have everything to do with photography and less to do with film in particular. Of course, what what I love about film is that, that there is actual craft. Like you can't blow an exposure by two stops or three stops or five stops because you never get it back as you could in a digital ecosystem. But tell me about how the – so, hey, everybody out there, like go check out the book. It's awesome. Um, please pick up a copy and support Kai. And But my question to you, good sir, is I don't think of you as a writer. What are you doing writing a book? I know. I, I thought it was a weird, I, I thought it was spam. I thought it was because uh, when I first got an email from the publisher, they, they said, <laughs> "Would you like to write a book?" And I was like, "Who? Who? Who? Uh, are they yanking my crank? Are they really falling?" <laughs> I mean, okay, I've I've written some stuff before, but I'm not a writer. I, I never planned to write a book. I never thought, "Oh yeah, you know what? That is my lifetime ambition to write a book." But it just happened, and and uh, the first time they emailed me, I, I said. Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. But then I, I didn't take it anywhere. I, I didn't actually um, keep in contact with them. So they, I think it was a year later, they emailed back and said, "Hey, hey, yeah, uh, we're gonna be in the UK. Would you like to to meet up? Um, and would you still like to write a book?" And I said, "Okay, let's meet up." And then we we talked, um, and that that was essentially where the idea for the book was born. Um, and I, I mean, I, I had reservations about it. Why film? Why film? I mean, you... I'm not really a writer. I, I, I never 
for, I, I mean, even myself, I didn't think, okay, my writing's fantastic. I'm, I, I can churn out a book. Um, but it's a challenge, and, and it, it's interesting to throw you, you know, chuck yourself into a challenge and, and try new things. And, and this was a, a very interesting year for me writing this book. So you, you can presumably do a book about anything if the publisher is pursuing you as they were. And of all of the things under the sun in photography, why film photography in particular? Well, I mean, I started off learning film photography uh, when I was back in uni, and that was not through, not because it was cool or anything, but it was just affordable back then. It was... You know, digital was super expensive. That was how you learned. It, it was believed that that was the mechanism to teach you. Yeah, and it, it was great. And it's this, this is, um, it's surprising when you take the film and then you wait for it to, to be developed and then you get it back and it's like, oh, or oh, it's, it's, it's either a really, really stinking bad surprise or it's like, oh, wow, that, that's fantastic. You get this physical thing, which is your photo. But these days it's all digital and it's, uh, um, you know, everybody's got a digital camera. And I, th I think now people start to get back into film photography, and I think it's great. I thought it'd be great to give people a little bit of guide because when I first started learning, there weren't many. All all the learning manuals, all the books about how to to take photos were kind of quite techy and quite dry. It was all about uh, comprehending uh, f stops and and all these geek terminology and. Uh, I, I hated that. I wanted a book that was just easy to understand. Because, you know, for me, photography is not about understanding all these technical aspects. It's just uh, all, all the creativity is there in your head. You just need some inspiration to, to bring that out. And, and essentially, I just wanted to make a book which is, which is like that, to, to kind of nurture and give a bit of inspiration rather than, okay, you've got to understand this. You've got to understand the rule of thirds and things like that. Uh, I hate that. So that book is about hating traditional photography tutorials, basically. <laughs> All right, we're going to play 10 questions. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. First thing, don't overthink mm. it. First thing that comes to mind, you've just written a book about film photography. Your favorite film is? Velvia. Oh, I used to shoot landscapes so much when I was when, when I was learning photography, and, and that was my favourite film. I loved the way when you take long exposures and it just you get this nice magenta cast, and it, it looks gorgeous when you get those slides through the light on the light table, and it just looks absolutely lush. Just you know, you can't replicate that. And for those folks who were born after nineteen, and for those who were born after what would that be, nineteen eighty or something, nineteen ninety. Uh, Velvia is a 50 speed film from Fuji. It's a slide film known for its saturated colors. Again, blue, blue hour with that film is mm. just absolutely insane. Um, okay, so you've just written a book on film photography, and your favorite film camera is Nikon F, the original, the OG Nikon F from 1959, I think. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's so, it's like a tank. It's, it's a mini tank. It is. Tank. You can pound nails with that thing too. I think <laughs> you can. You can like. <laughs> I think Don McCullen. Uh, it's either an F. I think it was an F. Don McCullen, war photographer. He 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 got shot at with an AK forty seven. He stopped a bullet. That's how solid it is. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't uh, recommend I uh, purposely using it as a, a bulletproof vest, but uh, yeah, solid. All right, you've just written a book on film photography and the last time you were in a dark room was? <laughs> probably probably when I was in Hong Kong watching somebody else do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've, I've, it's, it's uh, okay, my days of getting my, my hands dirty have uh, long gone. I, 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 I have moved into a bigger house, so now I, maybe I can, can use the kiddies room as a dark room. Don't do it. I just just coming from someone who just went down a whole pinhole uh, camera extravaganza and had a dark room in my bathroom for the past, I don't know, a few weeks. Not advised. I, I don't. I, it's now. It's so. I, I'm so divorced from that. Pro I think it's it's beautiful and the chemical smell a certain way and it, you know it's very nostalgic. 
but uh, I, I, I didn't love it. I'm very happy just to send film to a lab. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I mean, if, if, you, if people are getting into film photography, it's cool if they want to try it. I mean, yeah, but I, there's some purists who, who will say, you've, you, you've got to do it if you, you shoot film. And I, I don't think there's, there's nothing wrong with sending it to a lab. It's, if it keeps you interested in, in the art of film photography, then so be it. Costs a bit of money, but you know, that's that's uh, that's life, isn't it? All right. So, favorite lens? Not this is oh. divorced from film photography. Now I'm 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 off the film photography questions mm. and on to just again, there are gearheads listening to this that want to know what your favorite lens all time. Oh, that is. I mean, that Lego camera lens is a bit special, isn't it? That's <laughs> that was that was some super sharp optics there. Uh, Oh, but, man, just as a reminder for, I, I don't know if, uh, if you remember this, but, oh, look at my camera is out of focus. Um, like, do you remember that there was a, a delay between yeah. when you clicked it, when you press the shutter and when the shutter would actually, uh, be triggered and that delay was random? <laughs> yeah. I think it was probably on Pacific <laughs> time. I think it was, it was definitely not on Hong Kong time. <laughs> Uh, no favorite favorite lens probably uh, I'm I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna name the most expensive lens which is a Leica Noctilux but the, the original well not the original there's the f1.2 version which is too expensive f1.01 that's oh that's gorgeous I, I still wish I had it today but um, sometimes it's nicer to have money and, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't justify. Right, nicer to be able to live live for a year <laughs> in the UK as opposed to having that. I can't lens. justify having a, a you know five thousand dollar lens or how much it costs now. It's um, it's it's a lot. It's it's. I think it's more. Yeah, it's it's probably probably a bit more than that. But um, it's a luscious lens. It's fantastic. The bokeh is gorgeous, but uh, it's a very special use lens. But still, I love the dreamy dreamy look of the the Nokia lens. All right, your favorite three episodes of Digital Rev. Oh, of course, it's going to be Chase Jarvis Lego Camera. That was for for so many reasons. Um, that's, that's why I said three. That's why I said three, just in case you didn't include me in the first one. Then you, you know, there's I had two other spots, two other chances. No, but there's so many legendary ones. I, I, I'm serious. What, what were three of your? It doesn't have to be. I hate when I'm asked like the most, the best, anything ist, anything superlative. I hate those questions. Mm. So three that you think fondly of. Yeah, I mean, there's the Lego camera, the Chase Jarvis Lego camera, because you know when we started doing the Pro Photography Cheap Camera Challenge, it was, it was sort of we, we kind of fought about you because of you know the best camera, your book. It was mm -hmm. it was so influential at the time and. Um, uh, we thought it, it was like okay, we've got Chase Jarvis. We we can't do any better than that. Once we've got Chase Jarvis on it, so and it was it was fantastic. We 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 did so many. We took you around Hong Kong, and we had an auntie um, suggesting to pleasure you or something like that. I can't remember. I can't. <laughs> There's you. I just I'll recap my highlights from that. Yeah, yeah you had uh, one of the subjects was I think misspoken english about mm, pleasuring mm. me uh what um there was the kung fu like troop or whatever that they, they were uh that was super super mm. intense you you made me eat pig's anus <laughs> it's literally like from street food yeah. and i didn't know what it was and then it was just it was basically it looked like calamari to me <laughs> and uh the savory snack and we whole. smothered it in... <laughs> and and uh and we smothered it in hot sauce and you know whatever it just it, it tasted like calamari and i think that was also on film i mean that was a uh a very a crazy adventure um yeah i, I enjoyed that okay so chase jarvis lego camera cool thanks for the obvious answer what about other two two uh, it's got to be painting camera pink because that was that was when I was still filming myself. It was just me stuck inside a room uh, filming myself. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be a viral hit. Uh, I mean, it could go down like a, a nasty virus or it could be a viral hit. I wouldn't say it was a viral hit. It, it, it probably annoyed a lot of people, but that, that was quite something to be uh, taking a camera apart 
and painting it pink. And I got electrocuted as well. So I have, I have to I have to put that in one of my top three <laughs> just because okay. it was blood, sweat and uh, electrocutions. And then what about slot three? Oh. These are fantastic episodes that are still out there on the internet and you can go look them up. So highly encouraged if you want to be entertained. Um, you've got to check it out. So number three. Number three, I, I would have to say the... Oh, God. This is just straight from my head. I would say the emoji episode. Uh, we, we, were, we had to recreate emojis um, using yellow paint, which is which which could be a offensive you know yellow yellow skinning chinese people up um but we did it and it was funny it was it was actually rita's idea so rita out there oh I'll give wow. a shout out to you and it was, it was fantastic we had good fun it was, it was basically the whole team everybody had fun and it was uh uh yeah it brings back a lot of good memories to me all right top three that's not quite 10 but i'm going to use this the six remaining for top three things you enjoyed the most about the book process? Uh, number one, it was challenging because it felt like being at university again, doing a dissertation. It, it, it's, it, there were times where I thought, oh, God, what, am I, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I've, I'm still, I've still got to make videos for the channel. Said every author ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Said every author ever. Like right after signing your book contract, the first two weeks you're writing, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was it was weeks and months in, and I thought, uh, uh, what, what am I doing? When 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 shall I get started? Um, and I, I looked at people people's books. I looked at I looked at your book, and I thought, how, what what was what was how did you know how does Chase do this? Um, so yeah, it was a challenge. It was it was. I mean, back at uni, I always did. I literally did my final year dis- dissertation on the night before it's supposed to be handed in, and. Um, it almost felt like that with this, uh, but yeah, it's challenging. It, it, it I kind of like the pressure. I think I always work under pressure. And I, I like the fire under my bum to get me to produce stuff. Um, I'm not always that proactive when it comes to getting started. Um, so yeah, challenge, something new, uh, something a bit different. Um, num- number two, I, I, I guess it was because it was. Uh, about film photography, I mean, it is, as I said, a, a passion of mine. And uh, if I, if doing any book, it'd have to be about film photography. It's especially while it's not dead. I think it's more meaningful that it's still around. People talked about the death of film photography for a long time, and uh, it's still it's still being used and, and by a new generation. And uh, it's it feels good to be uh, connecting with a whole new generation of photographers who want to get into film photography. Um, number... F- Sweet. Number three. Number three, it was just... It's the unexpectedness, because I, I agreed to do this just before all this COVID stuff happened. And then, and then I, because I, I had agreed... I, my original idea for this book was to go travelling, to use some money... And go traveling, take some photos, put it in a book, film photos, put it in a book, and then write it around uh, those those photos and that, that took. But that completely changed. Um, so, so it's, I love I love that we kind of turned it into something. It's, it, we we didn't have to force push out the original idea. Um, and essentially, what I did was take my photo feed. And we basically looked at all these film photographers from the community and said, hey, would you like to be in a book? And then basically I gave up the fee and that was uh, used for, for, for that. And uh, so it was good to, 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 change, to, to turn that into uh, doing something for the community, with the community, and uh, promoting good photos, because my photos were being rubbish anyway. So it's, it's good to fill this book with... <laughs> with all these amazing photographers uh, and their work. All right. Three things that you found to be the most difficult about the process. Oh my God. I think I've, I've blown all my, blown my load. I've mentioned it already. But <laughs> 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 yeah. 
you know, it's rattled off. What I heard, I heard uh, not a writer. I heard deadlines mm. are a problem, and I heard I need uh, give me at least one, one more because that's my ten questions I promised. Yeah, I mean, this this is uh, when as a first. I, I'm not sure if if uh, all all people who his first book who, who write their first book maybe it's like pancakes. You, you the first pancake is always rubbish. Um, I'm not saying this is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, I don't know, but this is, it's, it's a new experience. This is, this is testing the temperature of, of the, the pan and, 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 uh, and um, yeah, luckily I had uh, a good mentor, uh, the editor, um, Steve, he's helped me a lot because, um, you know, I don't know the whole process of writing books. It's, it's a, it's, it was kind of difficult. It was, it was like, whoa, okay, this is. It, this is not like writing on some blog. This is this is a, a different level. It's once it's once it's between two two covers, it, it's um, sort of quite professional, isn't it? So that was challenge number one, being professional. <laughs> um, well, all right, fair enough. You completed my ten question quiz. Um, Again, just as a reminder for folks, the uh, the title of the book is Old School Photography, 100 Things You Must Know to Take Fantastic Film Photos. Uh, you can buy it right now on the internet. It will ship to you starting uh, July 21. So whenever you're listening to this, uh, there you go. You, you heard it here, maybe first or second. Um, we're going to get this out nice and early in support of your book, but congratulations. So new chapter of this here conversation. One of the things that I love about you and your videos is obviously your personality. It's personality driven show. Um, the, the approach that you have is super casual. There's a, an accessibility, you know, I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about your creative process because there's right now there's people who are aspiring YouTubers or their gearheads or and they've followed you or they're new to you. And there's just some, you have some quality about, um, about you and the videos that you make. And I'm wondering if you can let people in, this is a very common question I have in the show. And I'm, I, uh, I mean, I've known the answers to most of these questions just because we've been friends for a decade, but this, uh, we've never really talked about your creative process, whether that's a book or a video or a photograph. And I'm wondering if you can walk us through how, how you think about the, these, uh, the process yeah i mean when it comes to creative processes I, in the book i mentioned that um it's, it's it's useful when you're first starting off to pick up on other people's styles and maybe try to emulate that and from there you can move on and do your own thing but i think with when it comes to making videos i think it's better to just start off and do your own thing because a lot of videos there are a lot of videos these days on youtube which look very samey and I think it's because there's there's maybe some big you, you there's always some big youtuber who people like and then they try to do exactly the same thing as that youtuber and it ends up you get a load of videos that are pretty samey but I, th I think it's better in the long run if you start off as yourself because you can you can maintain that a lot easier than if you're always trying to emulate somebody's work if you start off emulating someone then it's like and you suddenly revert to your own personality which is of course normal then it's it's a lot harder to do and then to, to to kind of explain that so it's be yourself and if you liked that's that's good because people really liking work for who you are and that's uh, you can't complain if um uh, that happens. I mean, my, my creative process is, has always been, uh, okay, I've got these ideas, let's put it down. It's, it's not about, okay, do I, do I know for sure this is going to be successful? Is it going to be, is it going to be funny? It's just, I like this. This is, this is good in my head. I write it down, develop that, and then, and then make it. I, I don't script things too much because I, I think uh, when you're trying to remember a script, for, the, for this kind of thing, I think it's it, it ends up being a bit too um, rigid. And, uh, I, don't, I don't like it when you're you're clearly trying to hit those lines, 
trying to remember those lines. Unscripted. So is the future of your uh, channel going to continue to be in that style? Is it going to be unscripted? And uh, you talked about getting the band back together with Locke. Is, is, is that is that part of the direction? Yeah. Unscripted I, vlog style? You know, you know when when we when we did, you know, like the Protog Cheap Camera Challenges, it was, it was about having these good ideas. Um, it was not necessarily about, okay, we're going to we're, we're gonna script this and have these amazingly uh, written lines. Uh, that, that's so funny. It's just about let's let's have organize these things to happen and let it play out, and then funny things will will eventually happen. It's it's this is this is always something we, we've done. It's it's a, it's sort of like a um, you know, scripted, but it's not. You 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 plan things to happen, but it still naturally happens. If that makes sense. The, yeah, the nuance, all that little, the little uh, texture. You can say this is going to be a funny scene. Mm. For example, putting Chase with some kung fu masters, but all the little moments in between. That's like where where the the zhuzhs, or, or when you're disassembling the camera to make it pink, and you can't really plan that. You, I mean, I guess supposedly you could plan to get electrocuted but it's usually not in the script to shock yourself as an example am, am i right or yeah am I missing the point i mean of course when you open in camera you're you're bound to uh expose yourself to that kind of thing but no that was not planned um it's all about making making things happen that will make the content as rich as possible then you reduce that into a nice, uh, I don't know, consomme, whatever, whatever. It's a very condensed tasting sauce. And the I minute mean, it's it's just it's just me filming myself, and there's uh, there's only so much you can do, and and I'm, I'm not really willing to, you know, I'm not in a, a typical vlogger which who, who will vlog about everything about their life and their, their family, and I, I don't really want to. Sh- show you know my kids on camera because who knows maybe maybe in a few years time they'll say hey dad you know what i didn't like, i don't want to be on camera i'm, I'm getting i'm getting bullied at school because uh they're laughing at me on your videos how dare you and then they'll sue me probably and i don't want that to happen <laughs> fair enough so is there some sort of a book tour or what, what, what do you have planned to help share the book far and wide? Like I, I know, you know, podcasts is probably, probably part of the strategy, but I'm curious, are you just going to rely on your endemic audience? Cause there's a roughly a million of your fans and followers in the, in the YouTubes. Uh, what's, what's your plan with the book? I'm, 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 you know what? It's what we had originally planned was completely different to now. We're, originally I was supposed to go to, to LA, you know, hang out in America, shoot, shoot a video, and uh, sign some books, but of course, COVID happened, and, and there's this whole unpredictability of that, and uh, we just had to change everything. And, and even even now, there's no book signings planned because there's, we don't know what's happening. Even in in the UK, we don't yeah. know when things are going to settle down a bit. So it's a bit a bit of a shame, but we just have to to, to make do with what what if we can. Fair enough. We'll, we'll, we were going to be excited to see you over here. And now that we don't, um, I will, I'll bite my lip, but I hope to get to hang out with you again in the not too distant future, man. It's been too long. I think the last time we were together was in, was it, gosh, maybe London like yeah. five years ago or something? Yeah, yeah. I was out there for a photography conference or something. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, I don't remember what I was out there for, but we got we had lunch at some lovely little cafe. I remember you're choosing. Yes, yeah. That, and then before that was um, oh, it's probably like five year intervals, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, as given it's been five years, I should let you know that I will be in the UK in September. Uh, I got a, I'm, I'm yeah I'm speaking at one of the uh, photo shows there. And, oh, uh, I will. Yes. I will look forward to being reunited if if uh, you can grab lunch, dear friend. Is it the the photography show? I don't know. I think so. Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of the shows. A bunch of these things dotted on the horizon. Okay. Yeah. That's. Um, I'll, I will. 
I will promote it when the time is right. That shows but, uh, just how uh, how busy a man you are, Chase. It's 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 too many things going on. It cuts both ways, and not as busy a person who's got a a, a rapidly growing family. Oh, uh, you know what? It, it, and a book, and a new YouTube channel, and friend, you know, and Locke moving back to. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's going to have to sleep on your couch for a little bit at least. So you also are busy, and I wanted to say thanks for taking time out of your schedule to sit here with us and to bring back a little bit of the OG juice here, the the uh, Digital Rev, but uh, mostly it, less about Digital Rev and more about you, your personality. Thank you so much for being such a shining star in the photography industry. So many people have learned so much from your videos, been entertained. Um, you were a fantastic host, and uh, I'm looking forward to your, your next chapter. And of course, the book, which I'm going to give another shout out here. The title again is Old School Photography, 100 Things You Must Know to Take Fantastic film photos out here in mid July, 2021. So if you don't have a copy, like now's the time, um, any advice to the listeners out there, uh, as, as we ride off into the sunset, I would love a closing piece of wisdom from you, Mr. Kai Manuel. Don't hold back, do anything as long as it doesn't get you arrested. <laughs> Spoken like a true renegade. Uh, thanks so much for being on the show, bud. Appreciate it. Let's go out and support Kai. And, uh, and I will hit you separately on, uh, on, on your internet connected device so that we can get lunch in September. All right. Thank you, Chase. Of course, signing off everybody. Uh, until next time, let's go support Kai and I bid you all adieu.